Welcome back to Bunter's Yard. Today we're using hairspray to create chipping effects on our wagons. Now military model has been using hairspray to create chipping effects on their tanks and armoured vehicles and aircraft for, for absolutely ages and it's a technique we can use on our rolling stock. So the basic principle consists of three layers. So the first layer will be your undercoat, your base coat on your wagon, which may be the original color. Um, so if it's been repurposed from Great Western to British Rail, for instance, you may want to keep the, the Great Western layer, uh, livery underneath. Uh, it may be a primer coat from when it was originally painted. It could be the original metal construction underneath or wood. Um, or in this case, today we're going to use uh, rust because I like a bit of rust. The middle layer is going to be your release layer. Today we're going to use hairspray for that. And then the final layer would be your top coat, so your finished colour of your, of your wagon, whatever colour that may be. It's quite a simple technique. We're going to demonstrate today on our lovely Tryan gondola. Now if you want to watch other weathering videos in the series or catch updates on Bunter's Yard, then don't forget to click the subscribe button, ping on the bell, and then every time we upload, you'll be notified and you can join us. So let's get over to the bench and make a start on our gondola. Right, first things uh, first, in this particular model, we'll give her a wash, um, maybe the sink as well afterwards. Um, 57 years of grime, I think it deserves a little clean. Just uh, helps with the paint a little bit. And then a selection of uh, different um, different rust colors that we'll use. Rust is obviously quite a very random uh, effect, so we're just gonna do it in different patches. So dark brown, this is chocolate brown around the, around the edges. and then lighter brown in between. Just keeping it fairly, fairly random. Um, if, you've, if you're modeling on a particular um, existing wagon, then you uh, then you may want to sort of copy that a bit more closely, but we're just uh, just doing it randomly, fairly randomly and, uh, and free, just, uh, just to show different effects. That colour is actually particular. He's actually orange. I'm not sure what's come out of it. Beige on this. So we use that as a highlight in different places along the bottom rails there. Some of the uh, some of the middle uh, supports, and then also uh, weathering powder. You can use different weathering powder. Um, Maybe put it on a little bit too heavy here, but it actually paid off in the end um, when we come to do the chipping. So I'm just using one colour of, of uh, rust pigment here. I've, we've got several, but just using the one just for uh, just for a bit of speed. You may want to take a bit more time when you do your model. This is just for, like I say, a demonstration. So our middle uh, layer, our release agent is, um, well, as you can see, hairspray extra firm from uh, from a big store. Um, different models will use different brands. Some will insist they use Tresemme and uh, extra firm or whatever the case may be. Uh, this one's uh, worked just as well for uh, all the time I've had it. You can also buy from um, Vallejo and AK and so on. Um, different chipping mediums. So with this one, we're just going to give two coats. So just one coat, uh, one light coat, let that dry. And then a second light coat as well. If you do your coats too heavy, the effect will still work, but you might find the paint will sort of come off in bigger chunks uh, rather than chips. Our top coat is going to be, as you can see, this blue. It's like a mainline blue. It's just a random blue that I picked from the, from the shelf. Um, just to give... Uh, a contrast to to the uh, to the rust effect that we're using underneath. 
this was put on fairly light so the uh, so the chipping effect would uh, happen fairly quickly you can put on more coats or thicker coats um, and the more you put on the less it will chip and the more work you'd have to do and uh, heavier brushes and so on but it may be an effect that you uh, that you prefer so it's a bit of trial and error until you get a technique that you're particularly happy with in this uh, in this blue to begin with you can see the weathering powder is popping through there so that's not going to uh, put up much resistance when we start chipping later on so that will uh, bleed through fairly quickly top rails we'll paint those in as well and we'll um, add a little effect to that later on now you find on some wagons that there's going to be uh, some dodgy repairs that have gone on throughout its life um, and even if they're painted with the correct colour fading will happen in, in different rates depending on the, the age of the paint I guess so that's to just to represent a, a repair and this one is, uh, is like an oxide red just to show that it's been repaired but not painted back to its original colour typical of, a, of a, an older wagon I guess And then maybe some of the uh, some of the joins along the top rails would have just had a uh, a weld and, and a repair just left in red primer. So we're just doing that just to simulate that. And then down to the good bit is our chipping. Now we use a brush, just dip it in water, not too wet, but just just dry it off a little bit, and then just start to brush and do it very lightly and you'll see it comes off fairly fairly readily as soon as the paint is moistened again it will release itself from the uh from the hairspray or the hairspray will release itself from the from the rust uh, coat below it and uh, there you have your chipping effect so it's fairly fairly easy to do try different brushes um that's a very fine one i'm using there and very lightly um that one is my um Old faithful been with for years that one um, but it's a bit gummed up and it's a bit bit too thick really so that takes effect quite easily with that particular one and then for the finer detail I'll just use say the uh, I guess a zero brush quite a light brush you might find if your paint is sticky you need to use a bit more pressure you may need to use leave the water on a little bit longer for it to soak through and uh, and release the paint from the uh, from the layer below it now on this particular part I've decided to um, take a lot of the paint off so most of the top portion I wanted to uh, to show the rust and then just leave a bit of blue at the bottom So you just continue around the model doing uh, um, the effect uh, uh, randomly if you choose. You may want to do just around the edges, around the rails, or you may just want to do the inner part of the portion, uh, the, uh, the inner part of the panel. This one where I've had the repair, I decided that just um, below the, the, the panel where the, um, where the logo would normally go, you say dry railways on that one um, we're just going to release the um, paint from there just apply the chips just below the rail we're going to leave the rail pretty much intact and you can see the weathering powder has, uh, has popped through fairly easily and we just carry on very very lightly around just highlights the panel just uh, just a nice effect Uh, 
and then just to mix it up a little bit more um, let's have a we'll have a scratch so you can use something um, maybe not as sharp as a screw um, just happen to be sitting on this table next to me for some unknown reason a uh, cocktail stick is normally um, a good option and then we'll just chip just below the scratch just to show that maybe the rain would have got in at the scratch and uh, and, and the paint's blown away and uh, started to rust the panel below it again with your model take as much time as you need um, this was done fairly fairly quickly just for this video although uh, I have to say I'm quite pleased with the overall result similar on this one where it's been repaired with a red oxide um, we're not going to rust we're not going to chip away too much just a little bit just to show that it's uh, wasn't the best repair in the world You can see the chips just starting to appear at the top there. If you brush over raised uh, portions like the rivets on this uh, particular gondola you'll see that they uh, they pop through fairly quick so you the tubing effect will take uh, take effect on the uh, on the raised portions quicker so just do it around the edge as well of the uh, of the panel where the logo would go as well just to sort of define the edge you can see that's come through there and then at the edge on the top rail just a tiny little bit just to show some uh, some wear and tear there as well and uh, here's the finished um, finish with all the chipping and we're going to give that a couple of coats of uh, matte varnish um, we're doing it with an airbrush here you can use a, a uh, an aerosol can, either just uh, straightforward Halfords or um, or Humbrol, and there's the finished wagon. Um, not a bad overall effect, I don't think. It took about an hour. Um, also did shortly after with this a tank wagon, which uh, I'll show you here. Um, one that I particularly like. So that's all there is to it. Very straightforward, doesn't take a great deal of time and a great effect I think. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell and uh, we'll see you in the next video coming up very soon. Until then, happy modelling, stay safe, have a good day.